I'm gonna see how long it takes to take these six hives and make a living from them. So I bought these six colonies and they were on that pallet and it was $1,100 and they are absolutely vicious. And I got one after me right now. Now there's a couple ways you can make a living from bees and basically is either selling honey or selling bees. And I'm gonna go the selling bees route because there's a lot less, um, there's a lot less equipment you have to buy. So first thing we're gonna do is go make some queens and start splitting bees, start making more bees. So this is what I'm doing to get um, calmer genetics into my bees. This is a friend of mine's hive that he loaned to me to graft out of. So I'm gonna graft a bunch of queens for me and a bunch for my friend. This isn't the first time I'm grafting queens. I tried it last year a couple times, or actually two years ago, with uh, not very good results. So this year I'm doing it a little different. I'm using Bob Benny's method, and I'm following it exactly as much as I can. And so hopefully we'll have good results. Four days ago I came in and put an excluder between the two boxes, because I'm still a beginner and it's almost impossible for me to find a queen when there's so many bees. She is, dang it, there she is, right there. Can you see her? Once I see the queen, I'm always like, how was I not able to find her before? But, all right. So the next thing I did is I set these boxes off to the side because that was always my biggest problem, trying to put a little bit of brood in with my grass and I'd always miss some eggs or some young larvae, then they'd focus on those instead of focusing on the uh, larvae that I gave them. So this time I'm putting an empty box on the bottom and putting only food frames in there, making sure there's not a bit of brood. So now I need to find larva that's only a day old to graft from. A lot of the bees that are on open larva are nurse bees and you want a lot of nurse bees in there to make good queens, to feed your queens. I'm in my truck because it's a lot warmer in here. It's kind of cold outside. I don't want this larva to get chilled. I've got little babies hatching while I'm doing this. There's one hatching right there. While I'm grafting my last one, tons of babies are getting born. I went over and shook a whole bunch off before. Tell you why it's going a whole lot quicker now. You know, comb is show. Uh, is angled and I was trying to go for the first frame going in at the top messing up so many couldn't get it took me probably 30 minutes to do one frame now I'm down to like six minutes for the six or seven minutes for the last one and this one will be just as quick if not quicker so when I started on that other one I was going for the top down it with that angle and I just could not hardly get it now I started going this way you slide it in um, I don't know if well, how well you can see that it goes in there and it scoops it up. So going in with the angle that way, it's been working great. All right, so I went ahead and set the grass in there. There's already bees hanging off of some of them. I'm gonna go ahead and give them some feed, uh, one to one sugar syrup, just to uh, get them juiced up as Bob Benny calls it. I did give this hive a gallon of sugar syrup uh, four days ago when I put the queen excluder in as well. Now this is a double screen board. It has uh, two screens on it and an opening going out the back. So that bottom one is queenless with absolutely no brood in it, except for the queens that I grafted. So now what I want to do is find um, open brood with a bunch of the nurse bees on it and shake it down in front to really overstock that bottom colony with uh, nurse bees. With the double screen board, it keeps the bees from touching each other through it. And it doesn't makes the bottom colony know that it's queenless. If it's a single layer where they can touch each other, they can get the queen pheromones back and forth. And uh, they'll, they won't work those queen cells like I want them to. Well, this is the moment of truth. Um, I've only grafted twice before, um, both times with not very good success. 
but this time using the Bob Benny method, hopefully um, I did it right and I'll have good success. But this is four days later. Bob does this step at three days, but with work, I wasn't able to get back here to it um, in, at three days. But one day later should be just fine. Well, they've eaten a little bit of this palm patty in four days, but not much. <laughs> Woo. Woo. I almost knocked that top bar out. So I can see already that I'm having better luck than I've had before. And those bees are hard to get off of there. But it looks like I'm having some pretty dang good success here. Uh, there's, see how many empties there are. One, two, three, three empties. <laughs> I'm tickled. I am so tickled. All right, well, so far so good. Man, I'm so tickled. No idea. <clears throat> so there's 15, 30, 40. So there should be 42. I don't know if they'll all turn out to be good, but uh, there's 42 cells on that. I am very pleased. It was a queenless cell starter the way I did it. And now I'm turning it into a queen right cell finisher. So I'm putting this queen excluder on so the queen can't come up and kill my cells. I'm putting the cells up top here. Go ahead and give them one patty back. All right, so far so good. I'll see you back here in several more days. Well, I'm fixing to go split those mean old hives um i went and built these bottom boards out of scrap from work i used a 3 8 rim and i'm making a double nuke box so i'll show you how that works so it's hard to see in this one but i cut these grooves i don't know how you can see it with the lighting but i cut these grooves in there then i got this quarter inch plywood slides in there and now I've got two separate hives and this one's entrance is here and the other one's over there there's plenty of videos on double nuke boxes and I got these and this is scrap flooring from where I work as well so that goes on under the lid so that I can work on half of it and these bees not go back and forth there was some bigger pieces of scrap that I was able to make a, a full-size lid so cheap i know so this is how michael palmer does his he usually does four on each side but with only this quarter inch plywood it fits five but somehow doing a double nuke box they grow faster than having a single nuke box or just having them in one big hive so that's what i'm going to be doing i'm going to be putting all the even though those queens are super mean i'll be saving all the queens so i've got six queens down there and I'm gonna go and uh, split all the queens into these three hives then when I've got those splits made I'll go in there and I'll just split the rest of the hives to pieces and we'll see I'm hoping to get four splits per hive but we'll see we're still in the end of April and still forecasted to get some upper 30s temperatures in the next month so I can't make them too small, but with this double nuke box, I should be able to share some heat through that board. I'm having to wear a full bee suit for the first time. Um, I usually just wear the jacket. Um, I'm not the type that goes without any gear on like a, you see a lot of people on YouTube. My little brother won this at a raffle at a bee club meeting he went with me to. And uh, I'm glad he did. This is 11 days after I grafted them, so these queens should be hatching out tomorrow. And the grass are looking pretty good. I think it's 42 out of 45 made it. And that's way more than I need. But I'm giving some to my buddy. 
So yesterday I went and made all my splits. I split those six highs into 30. So now I've got 24 queenless splits. And I didn't video it because I was short on time and those bees were absolutely eating me up. So now here I'm going through. Uh, my highs have been queenless for overnight. This is the next middle of the next day. I'm going through and just dropping a queen cell into each one. Then I've got a quart of uh, one to one sugar syrup that I'm dropping on top of each one. Bob says that they accept queens better if they've got feet on them. Alright, it's been uh, 12 days since I introduced these cells. So 11 days since these bees, uh, the queens would have hatched. And you know, there's 24 colonies and I went through 22 of them at this point. Now the 22, um, three of them, I could not find a queen or eggs. But that does not mean that uh, there isn't a queen because I'm still a newbie and I just may not have seen the queen. So I'll take you guys to this last one. It's two colonies and the odds are uh, we'll find the queen. Or the two queens. Or These are still some mean bees. I've, you know, they're still the same old bees until the new ones get laid and hatched. They're crawling on me. Crawled up my feet in here. That's why I put my belt on the outside. I don't know if you can see that. There's one crawled up in there and stung me on my stomach. Another one tried to sting me on my arm, but it's part of it. These bees here are the hottest ones yet. <laughs> there you go. It is getting a little late too. I fed them one quart of syrup right when I put the queen in. But they've been making comb and have a lot of feed. They've been bringing in some nectar. We're on a flow right now. I just didn't know if they'd be bringing in nectar. It's been being you know, such new hives, but they're pretty strong splits. And they are trying to light me up. That one got me good. Golly. I don't know. It's <laughs> too go on camera. I am getting beat up. This is a little big, but not nearly this big. I've got it. Alright, kind of. Look at them. Absolutely crazy. I don't know how they all were when we got them. Golly. Well, I have not seen the queen. I gotta be honest, it's hard to look when they are eating me up. Good grief. Maybe it's because they are queenless. Hey, smoke, over smoking these bees is helping. Have you guys ever had bees this mean on a nectar flow? I am just gonna put this hive back together, put a rock on it, check it later. Well, I know I have at least 19 queens that I laid eyes on. Um, the other five, I'll check back in. Well, I don't know. Was, <laughs> I'll check back in four or five days, and then maybe in a week. And if there's no queens in a week, I'll just uh, combine them with the others so that's not as good as I was hoping for but I went and made a couple of insurance splits with some extra cells I had so I've got two more queens up at the house that I can put in here so that'll make at least 21 that I've got so here I'm less than a month into it I went from 6 to 27 for sure and maybe a few more so how many do you guys think I can get in a year so I think I got, it was April 10th that I went and picked these up and how many uh, splits do you think I can have ready to sell 
or have mated queens in at least by April 10th of next year. Think I can have a hundred or fifty, two hundred? Who knows? Um, just if I do it right, how many of you guys think I can get? I'm gonna shoot for as many as I can, and I don't even. So it's embarrassing how many I want to get. <laughs> so I'm not even gonna say how many I want to get, just in case I don't reach it. But, but at this point, I am sure this is what I want to do for a living. It's a good thing. Um, bees are trespassers, so it's not like if I want to do cattle, I need way more acreage. But these bees are something I can do on much smaller acreage. Just follow along on my beekeeping adventure and we'll see together how long it takes to go from six hives to making a living. So thanks for watching and God bless.